All right, we continue to follow the breaking news on this hour of Fox Business, folks. Right now, it's 9 a.m. on the West Coast. It's high noon in the financial capital of the world. It is uh, just now 1 a.m. in Japan, where yet another tsunami warning uh, was issued. It has just been lifted just seconds ago. There's been a big quake. Uh, hitting that country. We're going to take you live to Tokyo, a 7.1 magnitude quake hitting Tokyo and Japan this morning. In less than 36 hours to go until the government could be forced to shut down. We've got big stories that affect your portfolio on a very busy breaking news day at Fox Business. Hi, everyone. I'm Cheryl Fasoni. And joining me for the hour today, I've got James Frischling, co-founder and president of New Oak Capital, and our very own Sandra Smith is with me. And I want to get to the... And she's correct, but, you know, Jim, if you go back to the 95-96 shutdown, you look at market reaction after that shutdown, Stocks actually rose. That was in the middle of the 90s bull market. And the Dow was up, I believe, 6% in the six months pr uh, after the shutdown happened. So it didn't affect the market at all. No, and I think it's very interesting that you bring up the, the, the previous shutdown because while this is a tremendous game of, of uh, I guess, of political uh, chess, I don't think the risks are shared equally between the Republicans and, and the Democrats. I think the Republicans who have just taken control uh, of, of the House and made great uh, strides in the Senate. I, I think if there is a shutdown, uh, 16 years ago, President uh, Clinton... Uh, his his uh, presidency was rejuvenated, and then Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich, Newt, uh, Gingrich has really uh, almost never recovered from this. So I think the Republicans actually have to be very careful here because I think they're uh, uh, they are they're going to mm -hmm. this the blame if there is a shutdown will not be shared equally between the two parties. And, and there are some government agencies that, while well, I'm thinking of the housing market in particular, is going to probably get some effect from this. Different side of the story. And turning back to, to the markets here at home, and, and Jim, I want to point out one thing. As, as he was doing his report, I'm thinking to myself, how many hits can the market take? Earthquakes, tsunamis, the Middle East, Libya, Yemen, I mean, you name it, and still not a big effect. And that's been uh, on, on my mind in terms of, I think the market's performed incredibly well, uh, given all of the, uh, uh, the, 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 the hits, the headwinds, the issues. I think economic fundamentals have certainly uh, justified the, uh, uh, the rally, but I'll say just that. Is this the time to maybe take some risk off the table? I think the answer is yes. The geopolitical risk in, in the Middle East, certainly what's going on in Japan, and now you have the inflation threat, the, the commodity prices increase. Um, we're, we're, we're recommending folks maybe take a breather here. I haven't even gotten to the ECB move this morning, Sandra. They, they, they're now at 1.25 percent. We're still sitting above zero. I was going to say, don't you think, even though we're not seeing the market sell off, don't you think we're kind of seeing that as far as volume and participation is concerned? Mm -hmm. I and mean, we really haven't, we haven't seen an investor that's willing to step in and buy at these levels. Uh, so it's total momentum play. The market continues to power higher, whatever you throw at it, mm -hmm. but you're not getting any added participation, people who are getting in now. We've also had a lot of M&A activity, and that's going to be coming up next after a commercial, guys. Thank you very much. Well, uh, another question for you. Sure. This, this is the most significant, uh, I think, of the acquisitions you've made over the last few years. Uh, uh, Pop Secret back in 08, uh, Kettle Chips, uh, I believe, last year. Uh, is this a, kind of a continuation of a strategy uh, uh, that you put in place a little ways ago? Is this a slight diversion in terms of the type of product, uh, but what are we going to see going forward uh, with Diamond? You know, we've had very clear uh, acquisition filters. We've been looking for brands primarily that would be in the snack set that would help uh, build, help us further penetrate geographies or customer channels that we were underpenetrated in. Uh, this business does this for Diamond. Uh, you know, Pringles is quite well distributed in the convenience store channel, for example, which is a channel that we are underdeveloped in. So we're hoping to leverage the strength of the distribution footprint to sell more of our own existing products. Uh, so this is right in line with uh, our acquisition filters. And while, we're, while we look at a lot of things, there's very few things that fit our narrow uh, perspective of what's a good buy for us. And this is one of those uh, unique opportunities. You know, Michael very well said. Hey, Adam and Rich, hang on. You might find this discussion interesting because we've been talking here at Fox Business all day about what a government shutdown would mean to all of you at home. Obviously, your investments are your big concern as you watch Fox Business. And Jim, you say that we don't need to be terribly concerned about our investments, even if we do have a shutdown, considering past historical data of the markets. I think that's correct. And as Sandra commented earlier, it, it, I expect if it did happen, it would be very short-lived. Mm -hmm. um, but in looking at some recent polls, 60-plus percent uh, of Americans don't want to see this happen. And and, and I, I, I guess I would be encouraging the uh, the lawmakers to uh, uh, not not to test uh, not to put any un unnecessary pressure. Well, I, did, um, I did mention this though earlier, guys, and that is about uh, the FHA in particular. That would shut down. We we're talking about the IRS. Those paper returns are going to be affected. Sandra says, "Ah, oh, small problem." But, but I do think deal. that spooks a couple of people. And our in-house tax expert Tracy Burns, we were chatting with her yesterday, and we said, "Wait a second. I mean, if you electronically file." 
you're going to get an automatic tax return. So there's a scare tactic going on there. About 20 yeah. to 30 percent of people still paper file. You would probably be affected by that and you might get a delayed return. But otherwise, most of us electronically file, you probably wouldn't be yeah. affected. Goldman Sachs did say that because of government spending, you would see a small hit to GDP. But maybe it'd be nice to see GDP not be so comprised of government spending. <laughs> <laughs> Who's just essential? a thought. Just a thought. I'm just such the optimist sometimes. All right. Rich Edson, Adam Shapiro. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Great stuff. It's been a very busy day, of course, for the U.S. government and for both of you. Uh, coming up, and real quick, I want to let our viewers know that in about two minutes from now, a major meeting on the budget showdown is going to be starting at the White House. We just heard from uh, with, uh, Press Secretary uh, Carney uh, that he's going to be trying to update us on what's happening. But there are the participants, the president, the vice president, Senator Reid, uh, Congressman uh, Boehner, and they are going to be hopefully coming up with some type of deal. And we've been talking about it on set throughout the hour, myself and Jim and Sandra, about the effects of what a government shutdown would be. And, you know, I was thinking about defense contractors and if there's going to be some slowdown on that side, Sandra, in particular Boeing, who just got a major government contract. Well, yeah, there's going to be there's going to be hesitation and there's going to be fear on all fronts until it actually happens and we realize that things will get going again sooner than later. But, you know, it's the uncertainty that kills everybody, Cheryl. We don't know how long this will be for. We don't know if it's going to happen right now. So you see hesitancy in the markets. I mean, we're down 25 points right now. People with, with all this uncertainty, they don't know what's going to happen next. This meeting's coming up in the next hour. People just kind of are stepping back right now and letting things happen. That explains the low volume, which we spoke about earlier, Jim. No, I think that's right. I, I commented earlier this was a game of political chess. I think I might switch that to a game of political chicken. Uh, so my hope is uh, this gets resolved before uh, we go to that to right. that uh, before we get to that, uh, that that stoppage. Well, we shall see if these gentlemen get together. Maybe they'll have some wine with their meeting and maybe try <laughs> to figure out the situation in Washington as the rest of us sit and wait for the results on that. I do want to let you know, folks, that coming.